Hey everybody and welcome back to some more oxygen not included. Last episode we were working on redoing our power setup. We moved all of our generators from the bottom of the base over here to the far left of the base over here and in doing so we also added a bunch of transformers to our base one for every single floor to allow us to more easily organize our cables and also make them a lot more user friendly going forward because it's now just so much easier to see where power is being used and how much power we have got free to use on any given line of the base uh, but that is not what we are going to work on in today's episode today i finally want to get around to setting up our electrolyzer to produce hydrogen and oxygen using the hydrogen to power our anti-entropy thermonullifier as well as the new hydrogen generator that we built over here and then on top of that i would also like to use the oxygen from the electrolyzer to pump around our base and to continue to allow our duplicates to breathe and survive and thrive as a colony so um, i did a little bit of number crunching between episodes and if we look at the electrolyzer here the electrolyzer produces 888 grams per second of oxygen and as I mentioned before, there are 10 minutes per day in a cycle of oxygen not included, meaning there are 600 seconds per day in a cycle of oxygen not included, meaning that if you crunch the numbers, you get to around 532 kilograms of oxygen per day if the electrolyzer is running non-stop and has a constant supply of water. And if we look at our current reports and we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see that yesterday we added 520 kilograms of oxygen to the base and we used 250 kilograms. And so the setup that we're going to make today should hopefully be well in advance of the amount of oxygen that we actually need for the base. And it should allow us to expand out quite a bit, adding a few more duplicates and still being able to keep up with that, uh, that oxygen generation. And should hopefully mean that we don't have to use algae for producing oxygen oxygen for quite a long time going forward. So I'm going to hit play real quick. Uh, there are also a couple of other things I do want to work on in today's episode. People have pointed out in the comment section time and time again that we do still have quite a bit of stuff around the base. Like there's a little bit of polluted water right about there. And just roundabouts, there are like little pockets of water like here and here and down here that could definitely do with being taken care of. So I'm going to do a quick like mass mopping of everywhere that's not a body of water so that hopefully we can get rid of any little strands of water that are still hanging around in areas of the base that we don't want them to be in get rid of those and hopefully no longer have to deal with the soggy feet debuff going forward on top of that i'd also like to work on continuing to improve the decor of this room over here we did it a little bit towards the end of the last episode it's still very very bad and that is going to have a huge impact on our duplicates morale people in the comment section did point out that we should go ahead and sweep up all of the debris that's around the base including this room here because the debris does have a pretty big negative impact on decor you can see here the total decor is negative 10 and a negative 27 of that is caused by the debris on the ground and i think the more debris there is yeah you can see we've got 38 here and 47 there so the more debris that there is on the ground like negative 73 uh, the worse it gets so we could really do with trying to get rid of a lot of that um, of course some rooms are just going to be bad like the heavy one wire is just really bad for their core and so these rooms here are going to be bad no matter what we could probably in the future do with maybe having our duplicates get into the power room via a different entrance because having them go through this area here where all of the power transformers are um, is probably not going to be great for their morale. But essentially what I'm thinking down here is maybe at some point in today's episode, we might move the call generators a little bit to make a gap between them so we can put in a couple of statues and maybe bring the decor of this room up just a little bit. And also, as I mentioned before, I do still want to move our natural gas generator into this room and kind of clear this area here out a little bit i kind of feel like it's just not it feels out of place in the base right now so i do want to get rid of that um, at some point but nevertheless the first thing that i want to work on is digging over to the new area and we are of course going to continue with our uh, current flooring system so we'll build some tile over in this direction like so we'll dig out probably all of this area uh, we can use the slime to make algae and there is a little bit of gold there as well and if you've watched the previous episode you'll know that we are pretty light on uh, on metal all right now so getting any metal ore that we can is going to be useful for us and i think for now we will have just a simple ladder going up like so we'll replace two of these blocks with a mechanized airlock like so and i was contemplating whether or not i wanted to have the electrolyzer itself inside of the room and i don't really think that we do uh, the electrolyzer does produce a small amount of heat but i think the amount of heat that it produces is kind of negligible at, at this stage in the game especially if we build it in the uh, the ice biome here and really what we want to do is we want to have all of the gas that's produced by the electrolyzer 
condensed into one room. If we put the electrolyzer in the same room, then this room is going to get full of both hydrogen and oxygen. And then we'd have to have a pump that takes the hydrogen out and the oxygen out, but then pumps the oxygen back in. It would be, I don't think it would work. So nevertheless, we're going to have our electrolyzer in the room beneath it. So we'll have something, uh, I guess, that looks like this, just to make sure that it's in line with the rest of the base. We will, of course, put down a mechanized airlock there as well. And we're going to have our electrolyzer right about here. It's not quite in the middle. I might put it off center just so we could potentially have another one later on down the line. Sure, I'll put one there. And then we do need to have some form of gas pump in here. So we'll go ahead and throw one down for now, right about here, like so. And then we are, of course, going to have a gas filter. And the gas filter is going to filter out hydrogen and send that hydrogen up and into our anti-entropy thermo nullifier as well, of course, uh, as over to the, um, the hydrogen generator. So let's go ahead and hook that up like so. The oxygen for now, I think, is just going to go up into the room. I don't know if it necessarily matters whereabouts in the room it goes. I think just putting it right about there should be fine. It will slowly fill the room up here and then get pumped out when it's uh, cold enough. So we'll have that like that. We do, of course, need to have a bridge like so, so that we can actually take the hydrogen uh, that's not going to the anti-entropy thermo nullifier uh, and take it over to the hydrogen generator. And I think we probably also want to have uh, some form of gas reservoir between between the electrolyzer and our hydrogen generator because as i mentioned in the last episode we do have a ever so slight surplus of hydrogen with this setup you we use like 110 grams per second and we produce 112 um, and although it's very small it does mean that over time we should end up with excess hydrogen and if we don't deal with it then this room is slowly but surely going to fill up with that hydrogen and, and block the whole system up now uh, speaking of reservoirs whilst i wait for my duplicates to come and uh, dig all this out and actually real quick let me go ahead and put down um, a couple of ladders in here just so that our duplicates can actually build everything that they need to build here can i not put Ladders there must be built in unoccupied space. Excuse me? I can't build... I can build ladders here, but not... Oh, the nullifier is there. Okay, I'm not too sure, actually, how big this is, but I guess we'll do something like this for now, just so they can get um, all of this tile built, although I guess it doesn't matter too much um, on this uh, this top tile here. But ideally, they would get all of that built and, uh, and taken care of. Uh, I would also love to have a tile here, guys, like so, if you get a chance. Is that like a... Is there just too much debris here, or is it the... Uh, Oh, it's the sleet wheat is growing. Okay, can we uproot the sleet wheat whilst you had it? But uh, people did mention in the comment section using liquid reservoirs to store some of the, the massive amounts of water that we have kind of just sitting around in the base. Uh, those are available under the base tab here, right at the bottom, the liquid reservoir. And I think we should use the liquid reservoir for our clean water. Right now, you'll notice that the water sieve isn't really online all that often. It's kind of only online every now and again when the water is being used. We are going to pull the clean water from the water sieve and use it over here in the making of our new oxygen setup. And uh, to do that, we are, of course, going to have uh, a liquid pipe continue on over like so. And we'll hook that up in just a second. But uh, for now, I don't know if we should have all of our water stored in liquid reservoirs. The only reason for that is that I don't think that our duplicates can manually pull water out of a liquid reservoir. So like, for instance, right now, somebody just grabbed water from this pitcher pump. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they grabbed that water for. Oh, they did it for the, uh, for the water cooler, of course. But if this water was in a reservoir, I don't think they would be able to pull that out. And so for the time being, I will store our sieved water, which is still full of food poisoning, but is not polluted. Uh, and it probably isn't a bad idea for us to start storing our polluted water in a reservoir as well. I feel like that would be fine. You know, we don't need to uh, manually get any of the polluted water for anything right now. And it would make our lives, I think, a little bit easier when it comes to getting other little bits of polluted water around the base and pumping them into like a nice, small, compact little reservoir as opposed to trying to pump them into this big old body of water that we have right here. But nevertheless, for now, we will do something like this. We will have our water run in like so. And then the water will come out we could just do this and then get rid of the pipe in the middle. And that would work for this side of the base, but it wouldn't really work for this side of the base over on the right here. And so what I might do actually is have it like this and then cancel that, delete these pipes, which we should definitely disable ahead of time. So I'm going to disable this building real quick. And once that is disabled, that should mean that we can actually empty these pipes out without them filling up. Um, also, hatch-wise, real quick, we do have a lot of hatches and also a lot of eggs now. You'll notice these guys are all cramped. And so real quick, I am going to wrangle this guy, priority nine, and hopefully get him dropped off in here. And I'm also going to schedule all of these to be swept back into our storage 
Earlier in the series, I did want to keep all of the eggs around as much as possible so we could turn them into more hatches. But right now, we're not really at the point where we want more regular hatches. We're really only after the stone hatches, and we do have quite a few of them already. So I think in the interest of keeping our duplicants from feeling cramped and to keep their uh, metabolism high, I will go ahead and, uh, and sweep up all of the, um, not necessarily all of the coal in here, but at least all of the uh, all of the eggs and have those taken away. Oh, that's not what I wanted to click. We do have these uh, flooded building and broken building warnings, which I'm a little peeved at. I'm, uh, I'm not too happy about having them here. The reason we have them is because we've uncovered a building that has a battery in it. There's a battery in this little like area down here that is both flooding and broken. There's not much we can do about that right now. We could try and dig down and, and take it away, but I think for now, we're just going to live with the little uh, warning on the left there. But back up here, let's go ahead and for now filter the hydrogen out. We do, of course, need to have power come over here. And that does remind me as well, whilst they're working on that, over here, at the end of the last episode, we organized most of the base in terms of power wire. You can see the top couple of floors here were doing fine. But the bottom area is still a little bit wonky. You can see like this transformer is powering most of what's down here as well as most of what's over here. And so I think what I am going to do is get rid of this tile here. Actually, no, I should probably leave that tile. What we'll do is we'll get rid of this tile because that's where we're going to put the heavy watt plate like so. And I'm thinking of setting up just another little room right about here to take care of some of the power needs of the other parts of the base. So if we just do this and we get another transformer right about there, heavy watt wire going in like so and like so, and then regular wire coming out like so and like so, that way we can go ahead and disconnect this wire here and then connect, and also, I guess, for now, these wires here as well. And we can have this transformer kind of powering everything down here, as well as this guy. And that should free up a bit more power on this line to hook up the machines that we're going to hook up over on this side, which we, of course, are going to connect up right about here. I'm hoping that works. We might still have to put down another transformer simply due to the fact that there's so much power concentrated here. Like we've got, what, 480 watts of power right there plus another 240, plus another 120, uh, plus another 120, plus a 60 and a, and a 120. So it's still possible that we could have to uh, to move some of that. I'm also well aware of the fact that we can't actually work with our Drekos right now. Our Drekos are currently not able to eat because of the fact that no one can get through this uh, Atmo suit checkpoint because the Atmo suit doesn't have enough oxygen. That is hopefully something we will get back online as soon as we have our oxygen set up over here, up and running. But for now, let's go ahead and hook you up like so. And I think most of the rest of that is taken care of. We do, of course, want uh, gas pipes running all the way back here. Um, I do need to think about where I want to have the hydrogen reservoir between here and the hydrogen generator. I guess it doesn't matter too much where we have it. And I might even put it closer to this side here. What I might do is cancel that new pipe there and simply put the hydrogen reservoir right about here like that. And that way we can just have a gas pipe go up and connect like so, and then come down and run all the way along to the hydrogen generator like so. That is what was our oxygen line, but I guess we can have the oxygen run along this way now going forward. Yeah, sure. So I'll delete these pipes as well, just to make sure we don't end up pumping hydrogen into the base. And then from there, we'll have this hydrogen pipe somehow run along and connect to this. It's quite a long trek to get over there. And where possible, of course, we do want to make sure that it stays within the confines of the walls, just to try and keep that decor as high as possible. We, of course, don't want it connecting with the um, the natural gas pipes either. This is definitely a very convoluted pipe, maybe an overly convoluted pipe. We could probably just have it run across here. That does reveal quite a bit of pipe, which I'm not a huge fan of. Although, one, two, three, four, there is going to be tile here. There's going to be flooring right about there. So, yeah, I think that's going to be much more efficient, albeit slightly less aesthetically pleasing to our duplicants and then we'll just have that run over to here that way we can have a gas bridge right about there and then have this run all the way along down and across and into the hydrogen generator quite a distance to go but our hydrogen is being produced all the way on the other side of the base so there's not really too much that we can do about that is all of this reachable no it is apparently unreachable that is because we're awaiting copper ore are we completely out of copper ore at this point we're not we've got 4,500 uh, kilograms of copper ore so that's not too bad we're also fine on coal for the time being so that is all good we are a little low on algae ideally by the end of this episode that won't matter but before the end of this episode we might have to go and find uh, and dig out a little bit of algae maybe like down here 
Um, also, could we, like, turn this doll into auto real quick just so that, like, the chlorine doesn't come in? Also, I guess for now, we are going to have to temporarily get rid of this bit here and dig this guy out just so this can be, uh, this can be built. Why is... Oh, we disconnected the power. That's why that's not moving. That's fine. That's fine. I would like to get this back online sooner rather than later, if possible. Is this still unreachable? It is. Let's, um have a little bit of a ladder going down. Um, of course, we are going to have to put that block back there to make sure that the power plant can actually function as a power plant going forward. And I guess whilst we're at it, we can also go ahead and select a research here. I don't really think there's too much research uh, that we need to do right now. Removes salt from brine or salt water, producing water. This could be useful. We have seen some salt water around the base. Uh, there's also a liquid tuning, which gets us things like the liquid tepidizer, which uh, you can use to heat up water. I think for now, we might go with transit tubes. We're a little ways away, or maybe even... No, let's finish off Renaissance art. I really want to see um, if we can actually build those monuments, because if we can, that seems like it could be super cool. I will set these to a slightly higher priority, because I would like this transformer uh, to be back online and to get this, you know, gas moving again real quick. Speaking of gas, apparently there was a much easier way of uh, doing this setup over here. Previously, we set up this... Um, little bit of automation here with the uh, the buffer gate or the filter gate and then the end gate and the gas pipe element sensor to make all of this work apparently you can do this uh, much much more easily with a uh, gas bridge and uh, i'll show you how that works when we move the natural gas generator because when we move it we'll probably switch over and use the uh, the much easier method as opposed to trying to uh, set all this up again although i am quite happy with this i'm glad that it does actually work and uh, even if it's not completely efficient i'm always for trying to get some uh, some wacky automation setups going so power-wise, we're going to do this, and I'm not too bothered about keeping... Actually, I guess we will. I was going to say I'm not too bothered about keeping the decor high over here, but I guess there's no reason not to, right? Uh, and then we'll do something like this, and of course, not like that, but like this. I don't think this guy requires power, if I'm not mistaken, so we shouldn't need any for the uh, the thermal nullifier. I've noticed more and more Drekos around the base. There's like a Dreko here. I think there's also a Dreko somewhere like on this side of the, uh, of the, the airlock. It's probably this guy right here. As soon as we get back into uh, into here, as soon as we get our oxygen back to the ammo suit dock, I will start trying to move those Drekos. There's also one like over, yeah, here. There's, we've got Drekos like all over the base now. So I will try and get those guys back uh, into the Dreko farm as soon as we are, uh, as soon as we're able to. There are no glossy Drekos yet, which I think is kind of to be expected, given that our Drekos are currently glum because they're not being tended to with the grooming station and also due to the fact that uh, they're not being fed right now. So that, uh, that makes complete sense. Also, I can't help but notice that... Um, we did put traps down for these shine bugs, but I, I left it. I forgot about it and ended the episode. And now the traps are gone. I, I assume that they were trapped and then managed to escape. Like they just released themselves automatically. Uh, we might try and trap those again at some point to, uh, to use them up here. Although for the most part, the Weezwad here seems to be doing a pretty okay job of keeping this room cold. So for the time being, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this as it is. Like it's nowhere near, I say nowhere near, it's quite far away from the, the 30 degree cutoff point. So I think that's okay. They have still not built this here. Is that still a high priority? It is. Can they can they reach this? It looks like they can. And I'm hoping this heavy watt joint plate does count as a floor. I think it does. Hopefully. If not, we might have to move it over by one and have it be a little bit janky. We also need to get rid of these two uh, ladders here so we can actually build the tile back again. I'm going to set that to like priority nine real quick just to see if they can actually get it done. Because I'm a little worried about our uh, natural gas here flowing out everywhere you know what real quick just so we don't end up in a situation where this is still showing like the missing tile debuff let's put down our heavy watt plate over here and then have the heavy watt wire go like this and like this and again i'm going to set those to priority nine and then we'll put a mesh tile down right about here as soon as that's done i don't want to put it down just yet because otherwise i don't think they'll be able to uh to access it but we'll let them do that that's all good um, I do, of course, want to continue down this fire pole at some point and have that go down to the bottom, but that's somewhat low on my list of, uh, of priorities right now. For now, I'm really interested in trying to get this all set up. There is a ton of hydrogen over here. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to pump quite a bit of that out, but thankfully, uh, we do have our good old-fashioned reservoir over here, which I'm going to set to a slightly higher priority, as well as uh, pretty much everything over here. Nine is maybe a bit too high, but six, I think, is, uh, is fine. We are going to have a lot of water over here. Of course, this biome is made up of like almost entirely ice so as we break things and as things melt we're going to end up with quite a bit of water and so we are going to have to do um, a bit of sweeping at some point but for now i think we can uh, we can hold off on that i did accidentally just cancel our gas first of all let's get that guy back down i am a little concerned yeah that we're going to run out of oxygen for our suits here 
And so we might have to put down a gas pump and a filter somewhere around the base to get that back online. It's not ideal, but there is a fair bit of oxygen around here. And so I think for now, just so that we can actually continue to, uh, to do this, what we will do is we will delete the pipe here, connect this guy up to here, and then connect this up to here, and then also, like, priority nine, delete this pipe here. And, of course, run power over as well. That should, hopefully, keep this going. And I guess if we're being sensible, we should also use a filter, because without a filter, we're going to end up pumping things other than oxygen into our uh, our setup, and that's going to cause damage to the uh, to the exosuit docks. And so, again, in the interest of, uh, of being as safe and responsible as possible, we'll do something like this, and anything that's not oxygen can come out right about there. That, of course, does need yet more power. This is finally back online, so let's get our insulator tile down right about there. That will hopefully recreate this as a room and also get this guy back on, uh, on solid ground again. And for now, guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away and kind of just micromanage the base a little bit whilst we wait for this to build, because I think they've still got a little bit of time here before this is actually ready to go. And so I'm going to wait, I'm going to sit and watch them build this over here whilst managing other little parts of the base if any issues arise, and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so a couple of cycles later, and we're almost there. They've built everything they need to build over here on the right, or almost everything they need to build over here on the right. I've thrown down a couple of deodorizers just to try and get rid of a lot of this polluted oxygen here. Once we start pumping, most like this stuff in the hallway doesn't really matter too much, but uh, this one over here, these two are really what we need because we're going to start pumping the oxygen out of this room, and we really don't want to be pollu uh, pumping polluted oxygen out of the room and around the base. Um, so I just want to go ahead and uh, depollutify this uh, as much as we possibly can. Possibly could and i also do realize here that we do have to get rid of pretty much all of this hydrogen in the top room before we can do anything with this and so what i am going to do real quick is set up a gas filter this is gonna be a temporary gas filter although i guess it can be permanent eventually we can switch this out into a oxygen filter but for now we're gonna have a gas filter that looks like this uh, anything that's not hydrogen can be just left in the room and anything that is hydrogen for now can come out and go directly, I guess we should do it like this way, go directly into here. That's a very temporary pipe. That's not going to be there uh, in the long term. That's just to get all of the hydrogen that's in this room out of this room because we want really only oxygen to be in this room once we get the setup going. There has been so much polluted water, so much so uh, that some of it's leaked into here. And I did have to put like a little blockade here because for some reason, at a certain point, this water seal broke. I don't know how that happens. Like water was flowing into it. And then after a second suddenly because water was flowing into it the water like overflew this side and then didn't have enough to make the seal so the seal did break temporarily you can see we've got a little bit of hydrogen and whatnot in uh, in the base but that's fine uh, it's not too big of a deal uh, i have temporarily disabled this gas pump and i also uh, did go ahead and reconnect the gas pump up to this atmos soup dock just temporarily so that our duplicates can get in they can feed the drekos but more importantly they could build this gas pipe here uh, because they couldn't reach it from the ground floor here so i had to dig up a few of these uh, farm tiles to allow them to build that but our drekos are now being looked after again i moved the stray Draco that we had over here into the Draco farm. We can probably also do the same with this guy. If we got like a priority seven wrangle on him, we could probably get him as well, which would be fantastic. We got this little visual glitch here. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. We, we tried to build something, I guess, and now it's uh, now it's just still there. Like I said, there is a lot of polluted water. They've been mopping for what feels like days, and they're still going. But hopefully, eventually, the water will all be uh, mopped away. So automation-wise, this is currently turning that off. That's fine. I do want hydrogen to be what comes out of this. So we'll go ahead and filter hydrogen like so. We do, of course, have to connect that up to power. So we'll do that as well. Kapow. And then for now, I'm going to set this to if the temperature is below, you know, infinite degrees Celsius, 9,726. One odd number to stop at. But if it's above that, then... You can go ahead and pump that out because for now we just wanted to pump all of the hydrogen out of the room. And would you look at that? We finally hit cycle 200. Oh my goodness, how the time flies by. Just mere moments ago, we were working on cycle one with just our duplicates and a printing pod. And now, 199 cycles later, we're trying to make a more reliable source of oxygen. Is um That's only priority uh, to five, so they shouldn't be prioritizing the, the sweeping too much. But you can see, as soon as they mop it away, just like more comes. They never do stop mopping up there. I did fix the uh, the water sieve as well. There's no pipe there now, so this is all flowing um, as intended, which is good. Our carbon skimmer has no power. That is something I would love to rectify, although it's not too bad, actually. And I was thinking between episodes about actually trying to store the carbon dioxide. 
I don't necessarily think we need it, at least not just yet, but an easy way to get rid of all of this carbon dioxide that's in the base and make it, you know, a little bit easier for our duplicants to breathe down here might be to do something similar to what we've done with the gas pump here in that we'll have like a gas pump down here with a, uh, a pressure sensor, an atmos sensor, and just pump all of the carbon dioxide into a reservoir up here next to the chlorine reservoir. Just because you can store so much gas in such a small amount of space with the reservoirs, as opposed to having it just fill up the base. And so I might do that. I'm not going to do it just yet because I do want my duplicates to focus on uh, on trying to get this stuff done. Um, I think that should now be online, right? No? Send out a green signal if below 9,000 degrees. So... It is definitely below. There we go. Okay, so that's now online. That's pumping out all of the hydrogen, which is fantastic. Most of the polluted oxygen down here is gone. There is still a little bit of polluted oxygen. I think that's probably uh, not least in part due to the fact that there's polluted water in this room that is going to be polluting the oxygen. The electrolyzer is ready to accept water, but not accepting water just yet because we don't want it uh, producing that hydrogen at the moment. We want to make sure that it's all ready and then we'll turn it on, we'll lock the door and we'll leave it. I will set a slightly higher priority sweep in here because I do want all of that polluted oxygen, uh, to, all that polluted water that's producing polluted oxygen to be, uh, to be taken away. Mima still having allergic reactions, which surprises me. I did check and the uh, the germs are now significantly better now that we got rid of that plant here. They're really only in this room that Mima should not be allowed into. She's not. I'm actually going to say that you can't leave either. She shouldn't end up in there at all. But if we just tell her she can't use this door, then you know we shouldn't have a problem. I don't think that there is any more floral scent around. At least not in an area that she would go to. And so I'm not quite sure how she's managed to uh, to do that. Maybe that like, a little bit got out the door and she like breathed it in a bit. But she's fine again now. The stress is still nice and low. So that is all good. There is a little bit of polluted oxygen in here, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem for us. Uh, we can get rid of this. We don't need these ladders anymore. They can all go. I think I will go ahead now and reconnect up the hydrogen pipes. Like go ahead and uh, reconnect this here. Delete these pipes here and then over on this side we can delete these pipes now i think we've got enough oxygen in here to get us through the remainder of the build we've also got more than enough oxygen over in this side uh, potentially even too much oxygen because we're now waiting for this to get out of the pipe so we can actually uh, hook it up and uh, complete the link there i'm not quite sure where that is going oh there we go okay so let's build this pipe i'm going to delete that pipe priority nine because i don't want them pumping hydrogen into my uh into my atmos suits there we go. Fantastic. And then we'll just go ahead and connect that back up like so. Doesn't need to be priority nine. But now that should head all the way over to the hydrogen generator. Uh, hopefully it's not too hot. No, it's nice and cold. 8.3 degrees is actually uh, the opposite. It might cool down the base if uh, if nothing else. Maybe not uh, a large amount, but we might see a little, a little drop in temperature. Yeah, look at that. 30, 30.4, 30.7, 30.5. 29.9. Yeah, it does seem like it's cooling down just a little bit. And I assume the hydrogen is uh, absorbing some of that uh, that heat there. Yeah, look at that. It's now managed to go all the way from, you know, 5 degrees Celsius to, uh, to nearing 20 degrees Celsius, 27 degrees Celsius by the time it gets over here. So we're pretty much almost there. There is just so much water here. I don't understand why there is so much water. I feel like all of the ice is gone. But then again, maybe there was just so much of it here. They're just going to keep on keep on doing this and then whilst we wait for them to uh, i think right now they're just sweeping out the final bits of, uh, of debris over there i think we will go ahead and uh, move the natural gas generator over to here so real quick i want to have my natural gas generator right about there that does mean we're going to have to get rid of these tiles and build another little uh, so actually real quick i'll cancel that and we'll build it last but that's where it's going to go and uh, we are going to have a little kind of reservoir like that for polluted water and I guess what we should probably do is have a liquid pump, like so. And then using some automation here, we can actually get a hydro sensor, which sends a green or a red signal when the liquid pressure enters a certain range. So if we put like a, a little sensor right about here, and then we have automation wire controlling this, and we of course connect that up to power from, preferably not from the heavy watt wire. I guess we can have it just come out of the battery like this, and that should work. I don't think that's going to overload the, the circuit. But this way we can have the polluted water that is generated by our natural gas generator here sent out and i guess eventually connect back up with the rest of the base so kind of come along like so and then go down into here oh that's the wrong way right although i guess that does work it is the wrong way i want this to, i really wanted this to go back to the source but i guess it's not 
terrible. Ah, oh, no, I, I do want to go into the source, really. This would work, but there is always the possibility that we end up backed up with polluted oxygen and this ends up overflowing to the rest of this area. And then all of our appliances go offline and everything just kind of, you know, implodes in on itself, which is not what I'm after. So what I will do, even though it's slightly more convoluted, is I will have it connect up like this. That's a really long pipe, but it should get the polluted water out of here and back into our polluted water tank so that one, we can use it, and two, it doesn't overflow over on this side. And that should allow our natural gas generator to run forever. Real quick as well, priority nine on this, guys. I would love to have the automation wire on my hydrogen generator so we don't waste hydrogen. Already, that is broken. Okay, in that case then, let's uh, both cancel and delete the power wires here. I was thinking that might work, but apparently that is not the case. Uh, we could... I don't know, honestly. We could try and connect it up here, but that's a little bit tricky to get to right now. I think the easiest way to do this might be to have a bit of a janky wire coming kind of back from this transformer, although that's not going to be usable really either, is it? So instead, it might be worth doing something like this. And then can we use a can we use a wire bridge to get over this sir? Uh, this thing? We can. So yeah, this is definitely going to work out much better, right? We'll get rid of this wire. And then we'll reconnect that, and then we'll have that continue on over. Okay, that should be that should be fine. And so now, hopefully, we'll actually start to use less coal as well, because our hydrogen generator is there. It does produce 800 watts, I believe, of, uh, of power out of the gate. Yeah, right there. And hopefully, once it gets tuned up, it will produce even more, which will be fantastic. It is outside of a power plant right now, and I'm not actually too sure why... Oh, it's because of this, right? The room's too big? Yeah, so as soon as we put the floor back in here, once we put the mesh tiles in, uh, this should then become a power plant again, at which point we can go ahead and increase the wattage of our hydrogen generator and everything should be working again quite nicely. I think I might go ahead real quick and disconnect this pipe here and put a gas vent down here and start pumping some of the polluted oxygen out of here. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue, but whilst we wait for them to sweep it up, I think we might as well clear that out. This wire is still getting overloaded. Have I connected this up? Yeah, this has not been deleted yet. Can we get like a priority nine delete on this, guys? Thank you. And then we'll reconnect like so. That doesn't need to be priority nine, but that's uh, also fine. They can't get down here right now, which is a problem. I guess we'll get the mesh tile going like so. And we'll build like a little ladder here for now so they can actually uh, get in and out. So that's connected up. I'm going to change this to polluted oxygen. I think just oxygen might work, right? Like, that's how that works. You don't specify. Oh, no, there is polluted oxygen right there. Okay, so we'll pump polluted oxygen out now instead of regular oxygen and just have that go out into the atmosphere and hopefully get cleaned up by the deodorizers, thus making this room into, uh, hopefully, a perfect vacuum, at which point we can then go ahead and start our regular process. And by that point, hopefully, they have gotten rid of um, most of the debris in here. The remaining debris actually isn't too bad. I would love it if they would sweep it up, but it's not super important now because of the fact that uh, all of this debris is uh non-polluted water and it's not going to affect our uh, our base in any way we could probably also go ahead and enable this real quick so that the polluted oxygen that's up here can get pumped into here and then pumped out of the room and uh and taken care of entirely nice it's so almost there it's so very almost there it's just taking a little bit of time the uh, oxygen generation is insufficient that is because we are now fresh out of algae i think that is okay how did we do yesterday Oh, we didn't produce much at all over the last few days. How are we doing base-wide? We are doing okay. I'm not going to panic just yet because I'm hoping that very soon this will be uh, will be taken care of and we'll be able to start using the uh, this room here to get the oxygen going. I will set this to auto again now so that the polluted oxygen doesn't make its way back in, at least not easily. And I am going to set these to priority nine just so that they actually get that done and we can finally get this uh, show on the road here. And actually, I guess it doesn't really matter, right, if they pull that out yet. No. And so, you know what? I'll connect up the, uh, the water, like so. I, it doesn't matter that this is in here. Um, they, they're gonna, they're, we're going to lose a little bit of hydrogen and oxygen as they come in and out. But I think for now, this is fine. Yes. So, we'll, we'll get this online. That'll start producing both the hydrogen and the oxygen. The hydrogen should make its way out the correct path. And then this, I do want to change this guy now because this area looks like it's pretty much void of polluted oxygen at this point. So, we'll set that to regular oxygen like... So, and of course, at this point now, we want to make sure that we only send a green signal if we are below zero. I'm actually not quite sure what to set this at. Like, we don't need the oxygen to be that cold in the room. So, 
And this is always going to be, I think, below zero. Although maybe not. Once we start pumping the uh, the hot oxygen into here, it might start to heat up. But if it's below negative one, you could start pumping that oxygen out. And that oxygen is not going to go there. We actually want the oxygen going elsewhere. But I think we also probably do want to have a reservoir storing the oxygen and acting as a, as an intermediary. So I will disable this guy. Priority 9, delete that, please. And for now, they're just going to... I'm going to... Mm, what if I put like ethanol there? Will that just back up? It's just going to pump it round in and of itself. Okay, that's fine. It's not ideal. The hydrogen is being pumped in now. The hydrogen shouldn't make its way into this room. Like all the hydrogen should end up either in here, cooling down the room. Maybe too much. Is there automation wire on this thing? I didn't check. There isn't. Okay, so we probably want to have some form of gas shutoff. Connects to an automation grid to automatically turn off gas flow. Oh gosh, this is going to be a little all over the place. So right now we've got... Hold on, let me go back to the, uh, the pipe overlay. Right now we've got oxygen and hydrogen coming out of this pump going into this filter here. The oxygen goes straight up, the hydrogen goes to here, at which point it either goes this way or this way. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually where the bridge system comes into play. And right now we've got it set up incorrectly because the way that it works and the way that we could have made our natural gas setup over here much, much simpler is that if a gas comes into contact with something like a bridge, something that has an input and an output, it will always try to go from the input to the output first. So when the hydrogen comes through the pipe and up to here, it will always try to go to the output first and thus down into this tank. That's not what we want. What we want is our gas to try and go into the uh, thermal nullifier here first. And then if this cannot accept it, then go the other way. So this does need reorganizing a little bit because this is not going to work in its current state. So let's have them get rid of this. I'm also going to get rid of this as well because I think we do definitely need a gas shutoff. Otherwise, they're going to make this whole room way too cold. And so what we might end up doing, I'll hit play real quick here so they can come and uh, take care of this. But what we might end up doing, I guess, is having the thermo sensor turn this guy on if it's below negative one and then turn this guy off if it's below negative one, so we could have like a not gate. Is that what they're called? I think so, right? Yeah, we could have a not gate, which reverses the signal. Outputs a red signal when the input is green, and outputs a green signal when the signal is red. So we could have this a not gate, and thus turn this off when it gets below negative one, and thus have it come back on when it gets above negative one, turning this guy off until it gets cold enough, and then continuing the cycle. That should work, I think. So we'll have the hydrogen go up to here. Do we want it there, though? Oh my goodness, we got such a small amount of space to work in here. Let me get rid of some of these these vents. Neither of these vents are needed now, so we'll get rid of both of those. Again, we'll make that like priority seven real quick so they can actually do that above some other tasks here. But we'll get rid of both of those to try and make some space for us here. But I'm kind of trying to think how I want this to work. So we definitely want to have a gas bridge somewhere. And we're also probably going to need a gas bridge. Actually, don't... Oh, I was going to say don't build that just yet because we might have to put that somewhere else. But he's built it now, so we can, we can work with the the hand that we've been dealt. Maybe we do it over here somewhere. So if we have a gas bridge like this, it's going to be so janky. Oh, we do need the... Okay, we do, we actually do need to have um, at least one of those vents there. That's fine. That's my bad. But if we have a gas vent like this, we can then have one pipe come across this way. And this is going to be the hydrogen pipe that goes like so. So we can delete these pipes. And then the other bit is going to go this way and i guess now is where we actually want to move this guy that i've just built please delete that and please rebuild that over on the other side here so i would like a gas shut off right about here and then we're going to have the input like so and the output like so okay i think that's going to work so let's go back up to full speed so they can get this done hydrogen and oxygen is produced by the electrolyzer it's pumped through the gas pump all of it into this filter. The oxygen is going to go up into this room, which is where we actually do need to have a vent. So I'll put that vent back down like so. So the oxygen put is put into here and cooled down and then pumped off into the base. The hydrogen comes out of the pump, goes to here. We do need a gas pipe right about there. So it's going to come down and it's going to get to this bridge here. It's always going to try to go to the output first, wherever possible. You'll see right now, all of the hydrogen is going this way until this pipe gets fully backed up, at which point it will then go this way into the reservoir and off to the generator. Perfect. We now need to make sure that this is shut off when this is triggered. So 
automation wire, we're going to have a knot gate go down right about here. And then we're going to have that come into here. And then this go over to here. At which point, when this gets below negative one, which it's currently at, this should output a green signal that this is going to turn to red. That's going to turn off the gas shutoff valve and stop hydrogen being sent over into the thermal nullifier. That's the plan. This does use a whopping 10 watts, which is fine. We can uh, we can handle 10 watts. But I think, guys, the system might actually be ready to go. All we need to do now is, instead of pumping the oxygen here out into nowhere, we need to delete that, make that priority 8. We need to have our oxygen go potentially into a reservoir. It's not necessary, but we'll do it nonetheless. And so we're going to have the oxygen come round into here, and then out from here, I guess up into the tile, and then that's going to go across all the way, and I think I would prefer not to have it go through the water, just because duplicates don't really like digging through the water. Across, like that, we'll delete this pipe, and that should pump all the oxygen out for there. And I think that actually works just fine. We do, of course, want to have a bit of an offshoot, like this, with a bit of a gas bridge, so we can also have oxygen sent over to our Atmos suits, like so, at which point we can get rid of these gas pipes here. And eventually, of course, we will have more vents around the base, not just the two in the center here, but just as a proof of concept and just to get this show on the road here, let's see if this actually works. I think it totally is. So this is working. This is shut off right now because this is way too cold. And so hopefully when this gets built, I'll start pumping the oxygen out of here. This guy is offline because of max gas pressure. That makes sense. This guy is offline because the pipe is blocked, which is also due to max gas pressure. So right now, they're just waiting for the oxygen to be taken out of this area. And I think this should be fine. I'm not quite sure. Ah, I guess actually, real quick, what we should probably do, as I mentioned before, is build these out of insulated tile, especially the bits that are actually going to the base. Maybe even out of here as well, because it does get pretty warm coming from there. But if we build those out of insulated tile as opposed to out of regular tile, that means that we keep as much of that cold temperature in all the way to the point where it gets to this gas vent over here. All right, so it's now cycle 221. When we left off, I think it was around cycle 209. It's been nearly an hour, but I think I've got a lot closer to a setup that I'm happy with. So a lot has changed since I cut away. And I figured out a few things, I learned a few things, we've had to move a few things, but I'm going to walk you through the setup that I've managed to get over here. So, uh, one of the first things that I realized is that trying to run all of the stuff over here off of one power line was simply not going to work. There is too much power requirement here, way over a thousand watts, and so trying to run it all off of one power line, not going to have it. And so now we're running off of three different power lines, although I think uh, two of these might be connected. Oh, no, no, these are all now separate power lines coming from separate transformers, and so now all of this stuff should be able to run at full speed all the time. The next thing that I realized is that each gas pump can only transfer up to 500 grams per second of gas. And the electrolyzer down here emits 888 grams per second of oxygen and 112 grams per second of hydrogen for a total of 1000 grams per second of gas. And so if we're going to get all of the gas out of the electrolyzer, we need two pumps. And the same is obviously true in this room. If we're getting 1000 grams worth of gas from here, there's going to be a thousand grams worth of gas pumped into here. And so we need two gas pumps to be able to pump all of that gas out. And then on top of that, I also realized that if you have your gas pumps overlapping, and what I mean by that is you'll notice that we have uh, two separate lines, one coming from each gas pump. Uh, for example, if I was to grab a normal gas pipe and instead of going around this one, if I was to try and go through this one like this, and uh, we can, that doesn't need to be a yellow alert, we're not going to build it. But uh, if I tried to do this and have this oxygen pass through here as well, uh, this pump would get a pump blocked like notification. So it looks like you need to have your pipes go round from pumps. So you'll notice like here, I've got two pipes, each going around, then each converging on this gas filter here. And then in this case, they both converge on this gas filter over here. And so what we've got is we've got an electrolyzer turning water into hydrogen and oxygen. We've got these two gas pumps here, collecting all of that hydrogen and oxygen, and then pumping it on over into this first gas pump here. This one will filter out all of the oxygen and place it down into the gas reservoir. And then everything else goes over to this filter. This filters out hydrogen. Everything else is not hydrogen. And there is some stuff that's not hydrogen or oxygen because we have like polluted water in here, maybe a bit of chlorine, carbon dioxide, all of that jazz, that all gets sent around 
down here along the bottom and back up over the bridge and into this big old gas reservoir here and you will see that it is nearly full because we have got just so much polluted oxygen in this area and so i might even have to go ahead and put down a uh, second gas reservoir eventually we'll pump this out into some other part of the base or maybe even set up a room to try and clean it with some deodorizers somewhere that could work but for now we just need to get everything we just needed a place for all of the stuff that wasn't hydrogen and oxygen to go and the area around here is quite uh, densely filled up with um other gases that we couldn't really just have it go out of a vent and so and plus if it did go out of a vent it just end up back in the room anyway so anyway all of that stuff is going over into the gas reservoir the oxygen is then going from the reservoir here uh, up over this bridge and into this gas vent so it's just being pumped out into this room as usual the hydrogen is being sent over this gas bridge and then over another gas bridge and into the shutoff valve and then of course the anti-entropy thermal nullifier when the room gets cold enough this setup here is still the same the knot gate and the thermo sensor set to negative one and then the gas pipes they come online and they pump out all of the oxygen over into here and you'll see now this is looking much much nicer one of the earlier builds that i had was working but the oxygen was coming out in like these little 500 gram packets because we didn't have enough gas pumps or because we were overlaying our gas pumps and gas pipes to where one of the gas pumps wasn't working but now you can see we've got solid 1000 gram blocks which i think is the most you can have in a single tile being pumped in and being pumped out it's then being split here some of that is going over to these guys and some of it for now is going over to these guys um, i can actually go ahead and disconnect this again um, just like earlier in the episode i did have to uh, reconnect this up so that i could actually get through into my draco area this was mostly to do with getting all of the power lines online and working correctly for this setup to work. But I think it's finally working. It's not perfect because there is still polluted water on the ground. Thankfully, oh my goodness, it's taken them so long to get rid of that. I think, finally, I might be able to lock this one. And then just as soon as they have managed to lock that, we can go ahead and lock the other one. And this should be perfect. No gas that's not hydrogen or oxygen should be in this room. Let's go ahead and lock this one as well. And then once that's the case, once this is fully locked off and fully sealed, the system should work just fine. We'll also lock this room as well once they uh, once they fully clear out everything that's um, like all the stuff on the floor right now because you'll see that stuff like polluted oxygen is coming in. Uh, right now that's getting pumped into here. This is going to fill up any second now and so I will, just in the interest of keeping this going, uh, put down a second reservoir like so. Um, I do not mean to be building on yellow like top priority. We'll set that to like a priority eight and make sure that the uh, the gas pipe also goes into here like this um currently again not not doesn't need to be uh, doesn't need to be drop everything priority priority eight is fine uh, the only thing that's not currently set up is the backup hydrogen so like right now the hydrogen is just backing up inside of this gas reservoir it's not being sent over to this area over here and while that is fixable I don't know how easily it's going to be fixable right now. I think we probably have to do it like this because as we mentioned before, we want to make sure we do it at the beginning, like at the beginning of a bridge so that all the hydrogen will go this way if it can, but then the excess hydrogen will go, you know, around and, and out and elsewhere. Now, like I said, this is going to be real janky trying to get this to work, but I think that might be the best way to do it. Again, like the, 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 I don't know if there's a better way that I can that I can pipe manage this. It's possible there is, and almost certain that there is, I guess. But you know, if we just do something like this and have a gas bridge again, right about here, I guess, because you can't have a gas bridge over the input of another pipe. So we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll delete that pipe there, and then we'll have this over another bridge. Oh my goodness, there's so much like crossing over and just zigzagging all over the place, and you can't have a bridge connect to another bridge. So we're gonna have to go across by one, and then the cross and down and like that okay I, th I think that will work and that does of course require that we dig out like all of this up here uh, and that is going to expose us to a little bit of chlorine which might not be terrible it is on the wrong side of the the, the lock by the way you'll notice that there's kind of a, a vague line between the base that's not locked they're so full of polluted oxygen oh my goodness like it looks so much better like this but like in here it looks like there's just so much polluted oxygen around the base but this is the waterlock area and then there's just kind of this like tiny little bit of abyssalite that's blocking between what is waterlocked and what is not like either side of this wall is is either side of the waterlock so uh, this probably doesn't need to be waterlocked anymore we're at a point where most of this is breathable oxygen as soon as we get rid of all the polluted oxygen it should be fine uh they probably do still need suits to come in here it's a bit cold over here, so they probably do need that. 
But for the most part, this is working. And it doesn't look quite as horrible as it did before. I've, I've, over the last hour, I've gone through some messes, right? It's, it's looked real bad at certain points as we've, uh, as we've gone through here. But now, I think it's starting to look pretty good. Uh, there is a bit of a mislight here, and so this dig will take a little while. We'll do that at the start of the next episode to get the hydrogen generator back online. We'll figure out what we're going to do with this gas reservoir full of random gases that we can't use just yet we'll lock the door we'll sweep away the debris as well as sweeping away hopefully some of the debris from the rest of the base we'll finally move the natural gas generator down over to here to get it out of the way and then we'll also maybe look at getting rid of this uh, chlorine that's starting to build up uh, due to the fact that this is kind of leaking in over here so that's something else that needs to be taken care of but over the last 20 cycles, stress has remained low. Uh, there have been a few little hitches when we ran out of algae, but now it seems like we should be doing okay. Um, oxygen is being somewhat reliably pumped over. He said as oxygen just is not being pumped. What's going on here? Oh, is this just fall now? Yeah, this is just fall now. Okay, can we get like a higher priority build on this? Do I need an extra tile like right here to make that not be uh, invalid building location? Also, this is like a reachable build, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, why is, why is nobody, why is nobody building this? Also, I did realize that the one of the big reasons, if not the only big reason, why we had so much water on the floor is this right here. We had a ton of ice, a ton of snow, and a ton of polluted water on the ground. And so over here, I'll quickly copy that setting actually and paste it on all these. Um, I eventually made some storage bins on this lower level and sent all of the ice and all of the snow down into these so that we can... Because if you have those in the storage drawers, even though they're in storage drawers, they do melt still. And so then they start just leaking water all over the place, which is what is happening here. And you'll see if we go down to the bottom that there is just a ton more water down here because so much of that ice and snow has melted and just the water is flowing everywhere. It was a nightmare trying to clean it all out over here. There was just so much of it. But... Finally, this is back online. This is all pumping away. This is all backed up a little bit. But for the most part, this is working as intended. And the gas is still staying pretty cool. It starts out at, you know, negative two, negative three. And then as it goes, it gets a little bit warmer, but still, you know, negative two, negative three, negative four. And then as it comes out over here, it's going to slowly but surely cool down. This area of the base, we're already at like, you know, 25, 23 degrees Celsius, much cooler than the rest of the area here. Uh, there is a chance that over time it gets too cold. Uh, also, what in the world is in here that could be so cold is that like some wheezwort in here or something or maybe some um wolframite maybe yes i think the wolframite at 1.6 degrees is uh, a new metal or a new i think it's a metal that we've been digging out over here it's uh, this stuff which we've been uh, using and i guess storing in here and that's cooling down that area just a little bit i'm not gonna complain that seems to be uh, seems to be fine uh, as i said there might be an issue with this getting too cold as we go forward and we might have to um change the the way this works a little bit all it would mean is using less insulated pipe on the way over here so that the oxygen can kind of heat up before it gets to this point and we spread out the cooling effect around the rest of the base but next time we'll come back we will probably throw down about a trillion deodorizers to try and deodorize this area up here maybe try and organize this a little bit and sweep up so much of this stuff uh, but for the most part this is working i'm very happy with it uh, hopefully the electrolyzer is working at almost maximum speed so we get that 500 kilograms of oxygen per day let's have a quick look at our colony summary and you'll see that we are slowly but surely generating more oxygen than we are using and as of right now our oxygen diffusers are completely out of algae so the only thing that is providing our oxygen right now is this new setup and so it looks for now at least like we're okay i'm looking at this number here and seeing it going down it looks like we're slowly but surely not producing enough but i think with a couple of tweaks everything should be good here and should start working quite nicely it might be a case that we gotta make this room a little bit bigger i don't know this guy keeps turning off oh it's lack of power oh okay so we might have to um yeah this seems about right as well like this is coming from here this one transformer and so that's doing like all of this and this and all of this and then all four of these and so yeah i can see that we could probably do with getting yet another transformer down for the next row down as well so that everything is is split out but other than that guys everything's working quite nicely so with that i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's episode of oxygen not included there this one took a ton of time to make hopefully you enjoyed it if you did be sure to go ahead and hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out as always thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>